Hi, Jeff. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, I I'm found surprised out. we are here at deadline day. Jeff, where are you? You, you? you look. The birds are chirping. There looks like beautiful trees in the background. You know, it's normally so much earlier where it's a little chillier, but I decided to go outside. So, you are surprised yeah. that they uh, that they haven't picked up the option yet with today being deadline day. I am surprised. I I thought this was a foregone conclusion. I mean, it's six point seven million, which you know, in the NFL world, is not much at all. So I I thought this was something that was going to be a slam dunk. Boy, the birds really love the show. <laughs> they, really they sure do. did. I I think I think you're right. Six point seven and change, whatever it is, is not a ton of money. I'm wondering how this administration views him compared to the last. I mean, obviously Kevin Colbert was the GM when he was drafted in the first round. I I think we're going to learn a lot today about Omar Khan, Andy Weidel, these guys about how they view the running back position. I mean, shoot, they were going to pay Le'Veon Bell. They just needed him to sign on the dotted line. But that's not really the way the NFL world anymore. No, and uh, even that contract looks crazy high, even though it was that long ago yeah. for a running back. So it, that did not age well as far as that contract. You'd think the style of offense. I mean, this would be the best offensive line that Najee would play in front of. It's an offensive coordinator that appreciates a good run game. I mean, he's not – I wouldn't say Najee's a game-breaker. I think that's fair to say. But the guy's been durable. I mean, he's battled through injuries. He's played every game. Um, I, I thought he – it seems like he runs better in the second half of a season. Uh, and maybe with this, you know, new leadership on offense, new mentality on offense, new offensive coordinator, some of the things that he has been vocal about, about getting that attitude in the right place, it seems like that would be there where he wants it. I mean, it seems to set up that it would be a good, a really good two years for Najee. And then you could, you know, move on if you wanted to after the fifth. Jeff, do you think that Jalen Warren can be an every down back? You know, I would say that and Jalen would, would say, oh, I can do anything. And he could, and he's proven he can do a lot of things. I think, I think in today's NFL, you want multiple backs. Now, could you put Patterson as a running back? You could. Um, I mean, he had nearly 700 yards with Arthur Smith just a couple of years ago. Uh, I don't know if I – I think I want him as a tandem more so than being a lead. Not that he couldn't get the majority of carries, but I want somebody with him. Just because I think in the league today, uh, you rarely see guys um, that just handle the rock by themselves. I mean, it's very few exceptions. Just making sure I hear you right on all this, if you were in Omar Khan's shoes, you would – pick up the option i would pick up the option it's not cost prohibitive uh, i think he's he's been i mean he's, i know a thousand yards isn't quite the level that it was you know back in the day but he's had three thousand yard seasons um it's you know I, I it seems like he's he tries to pull in the right direction even though there's some stuff here and there every once in a while uh, i think he could be a part of a of a better offense and it's it's not something that's going to break your bank Jeff, do you believe that Dan Moore Jr. will start the season at left tackle? As of now, I do. Wow. Given what we've seen from Mike Tomlin over the last few years, and with the exception of Najee, of waiting to have rookie guys, well, and Kendrick Green, because out of pure necessity, uh, go in there and start right away. Now, once camp starts and Faltano is just, killing it which i would expect he does on either side of the ball i think that could change but given what we've seen over the last few years i would say that dan moore at least is going to be given at least at the start of otas and minicamp he's going to be that starting tackle and then we'll see how that develops but i, I think it's a good possibility yes if they do that i i really wouldn't have that big of a problem if it's the way that you've described jeff where you would give faltanu the opportunity to prove himself like even if you want to go ceremonially putting Dan Moore Jr. as your starting left tackle and then make the rookie take the job, I'm okay with that so long as you actually do give him the opportunity to take the job. What kind of bird is that, Jeff? Do you know? I don't know. It, it is damn loud. <laughs> it really is. It, I think that bird's got a hot take right now. We just <laughs> don't, don't understand what it is. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm I, afraid that 
its next move is just going to be to fly over and release on me. I've heard that's good luck, but I can't see how that would be good luck when a bird. You know, it's kind of like raining on your wedding day. How that's supposed to be good? No, that's just trying to ma mask the fact that you had rain on your wedding day. <laughs> exactly. I had a buddy. We were walking on the boardwalk at Cape May, and a bird pooped on his shoulder. And his mom said, no, honey, that's ice cream. Don't worry about that. Because he was getting all frazzled. <laughs> Took a finger, put it on the shoulder, and before he got it into his mouth, his mom was like, no, it's bird poop, it's bird poop. Could have been a disastrous situation for my friend Peter. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, my. Yeah. So the Pirates stink right now. Uh, they're 14 and 18. They find themselves in last place in the NL Central. And we started the show with this talk, Jeff. Like, Is it the approach at the plate? being handed down from Derek Shelton and Andy Haynes, or, and I hope it's not this, are the guys they thought would be good just not that good? Unfortunately, I think it's too simple to just say why, if you just got rid of Andy Haynes, that everything is going to magically be better. Um, and, you know, the approach under Haynes worked early in the season. I, I think it's this. I, lo I look at say Connor Joe his at bats look different than other guys right now why is that is he is he <laughs> bucking the trend is he doing something against what Andy Haynes wants I think I think Andy's I think the philosophy is flawed I think that is part of the problem here but I also think there's some culpability with these players I mean these aren't high school players these aren't even college players where you can make excuses for these are grown men that are getting paid that aren't hitting the ball I mean, up and down the lineup, really, with the exception, for the most part, of, of Connor, uh, they just have – I mean, in that Monday game, pitcher's wild as hell in the first inning. And O'Neill Cruz goes fishing for a ball at his ankles. Like, it, you are you going to blame Haynes or is Cruz have to know, you know, with he had one strike on him. Like, you got to wait for a pitch you can drive. You can't go fishing at your ankles. I mean, that, those are things that, that aren't – Andy Haynes' fault. That being said, something's got to change. I uh, did a story on our website right now about at least guys you could call up. Skeens yes. is obviously one of them, but there's more. I mean, make some change. Turn over the roster. Make make guys uncomfortable in that room. Uh, they, they've just got to do something because, you know, you like this team. You think it might have the possibility to be in the conversation in September. And are we going to do the same thing that we did with the Penguins and look back at these games early in the season and say, damn, they wasted some some great opportunities? Man, I hadn't thought of it like that, and it just makes me kind of nauseous over here. Do you think that a DFA could be in the future for Rowdy Tellez? I mean, I see the way Lamb is hitting a triple A. I'd like to see him come up here. I, I don't know that you'd need to be tied to Rowdy Tellez. I don't want to see anybody, you know, lose their job, but... Y y you're right. Y you're 14 and 18. It gets late real early here. When you look at Chicago or seven games above 500, you look at Milwaukee, they're eight games above 500. You know, if it's not Lamb, um, move Triolo over to first. Play Connor Joe a lot more at first base and bring up Gonzalez or Piguero. They're both hitting well down there. And I think G1 Bay could be a part of your future here soon. I could understand maybe giving them a few more games, but the guy what was he four for five yesterday he gets on base even if he doesn't steal he he, he makes pitchers think because of his speed uh, i realized all of those guys didn't have great seasons last year but if you're hanging on to michael a taylor and rowdy telez because and and not and that's stopping you from bringing these guys up with every passing day and every passing offensive struggle why not take a chance with the younger kid why are you committed to to these guys because they're veterans jeff i know that uh, O'Neill cruz is struggling right now but for the long run are you worried about him are you worried about him not transpiring into the guy that we all thought that he could be a little bit a little bit i, I realize he missed all of last season but it's been a month uh, and he just i mean he could i'm not saying he can't find it, but there's, I, I have where I had no concern after spring training. There's a little bit of concern right now that he, he just hasn't, you know, to use the old hurdle term, he hasn't punched back the way you'd like to see him as pitchers have adjusted to him. Hopefully he could find it. I mean, we've seen some, some 
better hitting, but I think it's also a mentality that's got to change with him, knowing when he needs to drive a ball uh, instead of these. You know, it's nice to flick a ball into left field when you're down two strikes, but, uh, you know, he, he just isn't driving the baseball. And as we see from this lineup right now, they need O'Neill Cruz to drive the baseball. Jeff, we appreciate you being light on your feet here and uh, moving to 9 o'clock because we have you every Thursday at 7.35. Had to move some things around today, so we appreciate that. Could you, even if you got other stuff to do, can you just leave that on so it sounds like we're broadcasting <laughs> right. from the aviary? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen as many birds. They just really enjoy the show. It's like a Hitchcock film. We got people texting in that it's a oh, Blue no. Jay. They're saying it's a Blue Jay. Go. Now the dog's coming up. All right, Jeff. Thank you for your time oh, yeah. as always, buddy. You're the man. See you, guys. Thanks, Jeff. That's Jeff Hathorne, our sports director. A lot of people, oh, it's a Blue Jay. They mimic Cox. All right, thank you. Thank you. Jeff's at the zoo. I mean, loud-ass loud bird. Yeah.